Hello friends, in this case I will be talking about revising a malreduced intraarticular calcaneal fracture which was fixed with multiple K wires. Then it was revised to a better picture in which the articular reduction was restored along with the angular parameters of the tuberosity with the anterior process. So this was the malreduction picture and this was the after revision picture. So we'll be seeing what problems occurred and how it was handled. I will not be specifically recommending any particular modality of fixation because the fixation modality can vary from surgeon to surgeon based on their experience. I do have experience in both plating and K wiring and in my opinion K wires are good because often the implant related complications are because of prominent hardware near the heel and the K wires are the temporary fixation devices that can be removed after 6 to 8 weeks so I prefer those. So this was the pre-operative radiograph of this patient. You see there is a combinatorial fracture of the calcaneum but the picture is not clear. And usually getting a good trilateral or axial view in these cases is difficult and often troublesome for the patient. Therefore we directly order the CT images because they provide a better picture and also details about the surgical planning. This is the sagittal cut in which we are going from medial to the lateral. This part is the sustentaculum teli which has an undisplaced fracture here. As we go more towards the lateral side, we start seeing the posterior facet. So this part is the posterior facet. You see the articulation of this segment is still maintained. The fracture line is undisplaced. Therefore, the articulation of posterior facet in this segment, that means the medial side, is still maintained. And as we go more laterally, we start seeing that the fracture line is more prominent here. That means there is disruption between the calcaneum tuberosity and the posterior facet here. As we go more lateral, we start seeing that the combination is increasing. Still, some part of the posterior facet is still intact and is articulating well with the talus. And as we go more lateral, we start seeing this displaced articular fragment. That means laterally we have our depressed fragment of the posterior facet and it is tilted downwards. That means this part should have been articulating with this part of the talus, but it's not doing so and there's combination here. So this part is mainly lying on the lateral side. This is the under surface of the talus right here. You see this is the under surface of the talus. It will be more prominent in this area. So it is more prominent in this area. So the medial part is still painted while on lateral side we don't see the facet at all because it is depressed and will be seeing it in more posterior cut. Here you see this is the posterior facet which is lying downwards and it's not related to the talus at all. Now coming to the fixation. So this was the fixation done. If you see here, the posterior facet is still displaced. You see it is lying downwards here. And this part is probably the combination zone. And this part is the tuberosity. So the relationship between the tuberosity, posterior facet and the talus is not good. If you draw the bowler angle here, it will come out to be like this. So that will be around 4 or 5 degree. So that is not good. And what about the Jessane angle? So the Jessane angle is like this. So this is a posterior facet direction and this is the anterior process. So again Jessane angle is increased. So overall the reduction is not satisfactory at all. Now for detailed assessment of this injury as we are going to revise it, we need a CT again because we need to see what is the position of the facet now because we are going to revise that particular position. So again, we start seeing the sagittal cut in which we move from the medial side to the lateral side. So this is the medial side. Again, uh, we see an undisplaced fracture here in the sustentaculum teli region. And as we go more laterally, we start seeing the part which was still maintained with the talus. And, in, and as we go further laterally, we see again the combination is there and more laterally, we start seeing this posterior facet which is not articulating with the talus. That means it is still displaced. It has not been reduced. You see, this is the posterior facet. Whenever we see this white flare, that represents the subchondral bone or the cortex. So there is no cortex in this region, but the subchondral bone should have been lying over here. And this part, the prominent part, is actually representing the attachment of the posterior facet with the tuberosity. Overall, we see it is also malaligned. That means the relationship of this fragment with the tuberosity is not restored. And this increased space here itself is a sign that there is something wrong. That means you need to revise it so that the reduction can be improved. So this is a better axial cut compared to the one which we had in the previous CT. 
you see there is the lateral wall here this part is the tuberosity but you see this white flare that is actually the depressed posterior facet fragment that should not have been lying here it should have been lying under the surface of talus so when we took the patient for revision we found that this fragment is very unstable this posterior facet fragment that was depressed is actually unstable it can move in any direction you need to see the joint under direct vision only then you will be able to restore the articulation of this fragment so a sinus tarsi approach is a good one if you are planning for a large profile plate placement definitely go for the extensile lateral approach but i don't prefer that approach because of its own complications so sinus tarsi approach is given directly centered over the subtalar joint there is a separate video about the sinus tarsi approach which is given in the description you can check if you want we, when we go through the sinus tarsi approach we expose this part and what you can do you can simply pass a key wire through the posterior facet fragment that was displaced so that you can joystick that fragment into the joint and fine tune its reduction we have placed the key wire in that particular fragment and see how unstable it is it is almost moving outside the joint therefore open reduction is important in this scenario now what you can do first since your medial fragment this fragment was very well in line with the talus what you can do you can restore the relationship of the tuberosity with this fragment just forget about this fragment restore the alignment of the tuberosity with the remaining part of the posterior facet and the talus then you will get a template for stabilization of this displaced fragment so what we have done here we have transfixed the talus with the tuberosity and it that wire is actually passing through the mid through the medial part of the posterior facet which was actually attached to the sternum tenae now you see the articulation here it is good and it represents the medial part of the posterior facet which was aligned in the ct so we have restored the relationship of the tuberosity along with the medial part of the posterior facet and the talus so this reduction appears to be good if we just forget about the displaced posterior facet fragment which was on the lateral side so this is a part of the posterior facet which is still attached to the sternum tenae and it is well reduced with the talus this is the under surface of the talus and this is the medial part of the posterior facet which is already reduced what you can do you can pass an additional k wire through the talus to this fragment so that it remains stable whenever you are performing other maneuvers for reduction of the displaced fragment and this fragment is the displaced one so under your direct vision what you can do you can pass a smooth instrument like the periosteum elevator you see this is the periosteum elevator and this periosteum elevator can lift this fragment towards the under surface of talus and while doing that you have to ensure that this fragment is also in line with the remaining part of the posterior facet so the so the plane of the remaining part of the posterior facet and this displaced fragment should match as much as possible so once that is done you can pass an additional k wire through the skin flap then through the talus and then towards this fragment so that k wire will actually secure this fragment along with the talus so that the fragment will not displace further and using this periosteum device you can actually give counter whenever you are placing the k wire otherwise because of the k wire pressure you can actually displace this fragment so the counter can be given with the periosteum and once that is done you can check under the cr whether the articular reduction has been maintained or not now you see the this you now you see whole of the posterior facet is aligned with the under surface of the talus this was the medial fragment and this is the lateral fragment here also we see that the reduction has been restored and this segment is the part of the anterior process which was actually comminuted representing this part so you have to provisionally fix these fragments with few k wires and then multiple k wires can be passed from the tuberosity through these fragments so then the articular reduction is secured further now after that if you are a plating guy you can pass a sinus tarsi plate from this area towards the tuberosity and fix with multiple screws and if you are a k wire guy you can just put multiple k wires from the tuberosity towards the talus and remove those wires after 6 to 8 weeks depending upon the combination so after doing this maneuver that i have shown you in the previous step you need to check the axial view only after checking the axial view you have to fix the tuberosity with multiple k wires towards the medial facet and the lateral facet so here you see we have taken care of the varus mostly the tuberosity goes into varus like this but here there is slight opening on the medial side that means 
whereas is not there it is in slight valgus in axial view you see there is good alignment of the posterior facet in the subtalar joint this is the saturnine tali this is the medial part of the posterior facet which is still congruent with the undersurface of the talus and this part represents the lateral part of the posterior facet which has been restored now and multiple key wires and has been multiple key wires have been secured through this zone as well towards the talus so in lateral view you see a picture like this now you can remove these two key wires which were passed through the anterior skin flap now we see that the articular reduction appears to be much more congruent compared to the preoperative one and some key wires are from from the tuberosity towards the talus to secure the posterior facet and some wires are from the tuberosity towards the anterior process and this is the post operative radiograph you see this is the area of the skin incision and the articular reduction appears to be good now all the angular parameters are good now so this is the jesen angle this is the anterior process and this is the alignment of the posterior facet so it is good and if we draw the bowler angle this will be our bowler angle So this is the bowler angle again 30 to 40 degrees normal value and this is the Jessen angle which varies from patient to patient and the only thing you need to do is to see whether this articulation is correct or not and this is the axial view you see the posterior facet is quite visible here it is almost parallel to the undersurface of the talus and we ordered the post operative CT also just for the education purpose so this is a post operative CT if we see the Sagittal cut again there is undisplaced fracture of the sustained tali so this was the part which was displaced now it has been realigned with the undersurface of the talus so this is a good axial view in which you see this is the medial part of the posterior facet that was attached to the sustained tali it is well reduced with the undersurface of the talus and if we see the lateral part that means the displaced part, part of the posterior facet it is also reduced with the medial part of the posterior facet so this was displaced fragment and this is the fragment which was attached to the sustained gum tali so both have been aligned and reduced so this shows the good picture the medial segment and the lateral segment so i hope this small case presentation about this revision surgery will be helpful for you in improving your surgical skills thank you